Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jim Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. There's my boo-boo. There you are. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? There's my ride or die. (laughs) Ride or die. Yeah. Die. (laughs) Ride or die. I'm with you. No, I'm your drive-by. I know what it is. I know. It's fine. Wait, wait, wait. Why I'm the guy. Be... I'm, I'm the guy walking down the street, You're seeing the you and all your friends drive me. down, having fun, going to the movies. Like, oh, hey guys. We... Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, that is kind of a yeah, kind of a true story. Yeah, I was in a car yeah. with a group of guys, uh-huh. and you tried calling me. Yeah, because you saw us. Yeah, and I you ignored. Would, you it. wouldn't pick up. Well, no, because yeah. I didn't know what you were going to say. Because mm-hmm. you'd be on speaker. Whatever. I I was protecting you. And you wonder why I'm depressed now. You wonder why. What are you talking I'm a about? You just came, you just person. came back from Texas. All the freedom you were looking forward to. Tell yeah. me. So how could you be sad and depressed when you had all the freedom? Okay. Well, first of all, uh, Texas did not make me sad or depressed. Uh, Texas was great. I went there. Uh, Grace View, great church, great people. Mm-hmm. Um, they're mm-hmm. enthusiastic, love the Lord, and they, cool to hang out with. Very gracious, generous. Yep. Uh, yep. Very always, kind. Always that way. And um, so, yeah, I was hanging out with Pastor Aaron and some of his people. And um, no, that was a great time. And you, we were all talking about, hey, in Texas, they've gotten rid of the mask mandate. Yeah. And so, yeah. I you, was all excited. Yeah, you even said in the podcast, yeah. I. Goodbye, suckers. Yep. All you here in Illinois, yep. you suckers yeah. are going to have to sit here with your mask, and I'm yep. going mask it's, free. Yeah, breathing your own bad breath. Getting, mm-hmm. How'd it go? Increasing the so how was it? How did, how did it feel? I yeah. didn't get to do that when I was yeah. in Texas. Yeah, no, they, uh, everybody's still wearing masks. Yeah. What? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the government uh, said you don't have to. Which... Well, thank- thankfully, the government's allowing us to breathe air. But go, yeah. ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I, know. I didn't realize exactly. you were looking forward to the government giving yeah. you freedom no i was the government recognized that uh, hey we, we don't need to be mandating this but the, but then the hotels and the gas stations and everybody else is choosing to keep up the signs and be like yeah go ahead and wear the mask <laughs> which they have the right to do i'm not you know oh, that's hey, their that's business no, no shoes no shirt yeah, no, yeah, mask, no mask no service that's right and uh you know what the no sh- shirt no shoes uh only applies in certain places because there are many places where that's not a, a rule at all oh really where mm-hmm. uh, certain uh parisian uh cities you know like whenever I go there, there are cool. just certain places that um, did you say Parisian? Yeah, yeah, Parisian cities, cities and you know, like uh, like neighborhoods. I mean, you know, the Parisian neighborhoods. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've I've never been there. Uh, obviously, I'll, I honestly thought you were going to talk about like some California. Yeah, I was I was referring to California, where like yeah, yeah be, beach beach cities, there beach you towns. Go. They yeah, don't you're care. welcome. Yeah. You're welcome that I fixed you that. Go with board shorts and you're fine. <laughs> yeah. No, but that was a, that was a really good trip. Um, got to preach on. Um, you know, covenant of redemption, nice. the old covenant, the new nice. covenant. Hang out with some really solid brothers. So, well, I'm glad you so. came back. I, I figured their kindness to you would have forced you to stay. Mm. Not forced you. I I, I think yeah. you would have you would have been compelled. Well, is, you that, know, is that fair to say? If they offered right me a here. job, uh, wow. Just saying. Uh, wow. And, uh, no. Jen does want to move to Texas someday. Uh-huh. And uh, no, I'm not going huh. anywhere. I Listen, Redeemer would have to be raptured away. And then I, if and if you weren't here and Redeemer wasn't here, then I'd so probably go to you, Texas. You would leave. I would leave. So you're telling that's me the only, that's, you're the telling, that's the only way yeah. is if Redeemer was gone yeah. and I was gone. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Can't think of any other thing that would, what am I going to stay for? I mean, I, I, the Italian beef is pretty nice. You yeah, stay for that. yeah, but I, no, but that's what I'm saying. So you're telling me you would never leave, never leave, unless those two things happened. I couldn't see myself leaving unless there's your out. Yeah, okay, I couldn't. Yeah, see, I couldn't see, see myself yeah. now. Yeah, no, I can't see myself ever unless those unless those were the situations. Yeah, yeah, you know, unless something else comes up. Yeah, something I can't think of. Like oh, that's that's the point. Okay, no, well, I can't well, think what, of any what are the things you're thinking of that would maybe draw you? There, that, that's what I mean. Oh, that's the point. No, there what, isn't anything no, that I can think of. What are the things that you're thinking of that? Could not drive you away. What are those typical things that you're thinking of? The Black Plague. I'd stay here. Don't care. Don't care. Nope. <laughs> you stay. Yep. Oh, okay. um, I'm okay. not going. I'm not going anywhere. But no, seriously though. Yeah. Oh, seriously. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here comes Joe's little rant. Nope. On how they're like him and he nope. feels at home. No, nope. I feel at and home if here. He was anywhere else. No, I feel more would. at home here. I feel more at home here. Okay. Um, no, I was going to tell you, but because I don't think we've actually talked about this. I have. You maybe you've picked up on it. I have been down a little depressed lately yeah i know that's yeah. what i'm trying to it's you know. been oh man it I, honestly it's it's a whole bunch of little things and some of them are big yeah um but the 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 
the fighting within uh, Baptists among mm. evangelicals over all kinds of stuff has been wearying and just discouraging. I just hate it. And, you know, like what, like what do you mean by the like? What I fighting? just mean like, oh, okay. So instead of disagreeing and hashing it out over um, these. Uh, current issues, right? Whether it's uh, the mask mandate or CRT or versions of that or what it means to be woke and all of that. Um, instead of like being brothers and sisters and saying, hey, let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. And in the end, our confession remains the same, right? Like uh, oftentimes I see Christians fighting against other Christians and essentially kind of writing them off when confessionally they're solid though there is a disagreement or they maybe one of them is wrong or both of them are wrong in a particular secondary matter. And I just, I, I'm just struggling with how See, quick I would, people I, are. I, but I think some people would say it's not as secondary as one thinks. Yeah. But, I, but some of yeah, I think they're going to say that, but oftentimes they're saying that because they are importing a lot of uh, thoughts and ideas into another person's perspective. So, um, and we, we talked about we talked to Nick about this on I think it was on a banter of truth episode where, you know, they're taking their their unpacking of orthopraxy or they're taking their particular solutions to a worldly problem uh, and treating those as orthodoxy hmm. when they're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I mean, we I know guys, you know, guys that are solidly orthodox yeah. that are that are getting a lot of heat, undue heat, I think as if they were false teachers and they're not, but yeah, well, I would agree. Wrong. I would say they're not false teachers. I would say, I think some of the heat though is like you say certain things or write certain things. Yeah. Well, it depends and, on who we're talking about. I know, about. I know, yeah. but I, yeah, so I'm saying like yeah. so, words I, mean things. Yep. And so you can only be interpreted off your words. And some of that heat and, is justified. It, yeah. For some people, for, for some, some people it's not. I know and because yeah. we're talking generalities. I yeah. want to make sure we're generally yeah, speaking, you know, you know, that, that falls it sounded very wholesale. Yeah. No, because I'm talking about those who don't deserve it. I'm specifically okay. thinking about those people that, you know, and what bothers me is, you know, we're supposed to be men and, and women who can exegete the scripture. We're supposed to be people. If you believe women are allowed to do that sort of a thing, I don't know, but um, we do. And you're supposed to be able to interpret the word. And exegesis is is a rigorous thing. It's not an easy thing. Like it's something that. You know, and Joe doesn't mean preaching on uh, preaching uh, as I'm a not pastor. About exegesis, okay, okay guys. I just want to make sure I'm throwing the, the Bible. I, I can Everybody already see the down. clips. I can already see the clips. Just, okay, listen. Stop lighting the cross on fire. Okay, um, I'm not. Uh, I'm I just like you can put down you know, the pitchforks or whatever. I mean, I'm just you know not. So, anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah, exegesis. So. We're supposed to be really good at exegesis and understanding the arguments, for example, that Paul makes in Scripture. Mm -hmm. And so we pay very close attention because it's Scripture. We need to do that. The flow. Mm -hmm. Where is he coming back to? Yep. Where the little 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 segments. You and diagram how, the uh, sentence. Uh, all that mm -hmm. circling and. All right. But then, in 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 some cases, I'm seeing guys that give no or seem to give little to no energy in trying to understand or rightly interpret what a person is saying, they hear a word being used and they take that word or that expression as a as, as one idea and they equate it with how somebody else is using that word and therefore that person is using that word in the same way. And we didn't we don't do that. Like when John MacArthur says, oh, if you believe in religious freedom, you're an idiot. I'm paraphrasing. Um, and we said, okay, well, <laughs> Religious freedom means something, and if you understand it in its proper context, yeah. I don't think that he would he would mean that the state allowing religious freedom is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. He's talking about it in a different way, and I, that's we got to get better at doing that, so that when there is a real issue and there is a real disagreement, then we yeah. can be specific, and then we're not looked at people that cry wolf all the time because we get it wrong half the time. And okay, I agree with you on that. I, I want to see more conversation, right? I want to see more conversation, more, uh, and I, and even from from us, right? Like more. Uh, more graciousness. I want yeah. I want to err on the side of I want to give the individual the benefit of the doubt, hear what they have to say. Now, I will say I do think it is the onus. The onus is upon the communicator to make sure they're communicating properly. Sure. And we all know there are words. There are words out there that are trigger words that have certain connotations within our culture. Yeah. And now, yes, maybe you want to nuance it so much or you're not meaning it exactly the same way. But you know you're doing a word choice, like you're choosing that word, yeah. and you know there's gonna be like pushback. Right. You already know that, so it, I feel like it's it's 
it's not a victim here. It's not a victim of how, how dare they come at me and treat me like this when you specifically used a word choice knowing it was going to cause a stir. Yeah. Yeah, that's why everybody's mad at John Piper because he uses the word hedonism. Yeah. And everybody's, no, they, they're not. Nobody cares. Everybody's fine with him using the word hedonism. Christian hedonism is fine. That, that's the thing. It's like they'll give him a wide berth on that particular, on the use of a word that has a very historic predominant meaning. Mm-hmm. It's associated with a pagan philosophy. Um, but he says, well, no, I'm, I'm talking about it in a Christian way. So I think if somebody, you know, takes the time to explain that, um, to say, hey, I'm going to use this word, uh, but I'm going to use it in a particular way. If they explain that, I think that that is fine. It may not always be wise, but, um, you know. But I'm saying, has it been explained well, right? Like, I think it, in some cases it has, and then cases, in other cases, it, it has, no, right? So, like, when, when people talk about, okay, just throwing words out, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, woke, mm-hmm. right? That has to be explained a bit better because of how it's, yeah. being, it's being used. Right. And you know you're using a word mm-hmm. that is has certain connotations with it. You, gotta, you always have to define your terms if those words are... Uh, whether they're used frequently or infrequently, because there's baggage. I hope you, yeah, go ahead. Because there's baggage associated with you can't listen. If you're going to talk about racism today, you do have to define what you mean by racism. Yeah. Because some people mean a very narrow, have a very narrow definition of it, and other people have a broader definition of it. So before you can really begin, you have to say, when I say racism, this is what I mean, and yeah. and that that then helps you to move the conversation, and then argue if you need to argue about how you can. Well, and that's the whole point of debate, right? The whole yeah. point of debate is you sit there and you define your terms. Mm-hmm. You're defining your terms and your definitions so that you're on the same page, understanding, and that's why you ask questions. So this yep. is the part that's missing. Yeah, yeah. You ask questions to see clarity because, okay, yeah, you use this word, but that word means this. At least this is what I'm understanding this word based yeah. upon the predominant use. Right. Is that what you're meaning by that? Which is why, like, we were talking about Dane Ortland mm-hmm. and his book, yeah. right? Like, as I read that, I'm hearing certain things, and I'd love to have him on to say, is that really what you mean, this kind of third way view of... Um, uh, divine impassibility. Divine impassibility, yeah. right? Like, I want to understand what you're coming from because it's, it's, it's muddled here. And even then, even if... So, and based on, on one of the footnotes that you pointed out in Dane's book, and we love Dane, and we actually love his book, but, um, and some of the critical reviews raised a couple of good questions. And so there's a footnote in there where he recommends a book on divine uh, impassibility passibility that I don't like. I think it's a, a, not a good book to read. Uh, certainly not for people that are trying to understand like, you know, what view they should adopt. Anyways, but even if he has, uh, takes that view, he's still orthodox he's still a brother he's not a false teacher mm. and so it's like those are the that's that, that we have examples of one critical review of dane's book which is gracious and treats him like a brother and another which i think is far less gracious which and, is funny because the far less gracious refers to that other yeah one. i know yeah hey <laughs> hey check out this one you know <laughs> how about instead of that you should just link that from the beginning yeah hey uh, i have some concerns this guy says it better than i will and here you go <laughs> <laughs> that that would have been yeah, it would have been good. Yeah, so yeah. why do you think Piper got a pass? Because well, you said that. And I, 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 what I hear, and, and I hope I want to make sure, because I know you're not saying this. Mm-hmm. At least I believe you're not saying this. But I feel like people would misinterpret. What, I'm, what I heard is, well, well, Piper was white. He got a pass. No, no. It has nothing to do with, in my estimation, that didn't have anything with him being white. In fact, um, there is a small group of reform people that did take issue uh, early on, mm-hmm. but very small, and um, about the hedonism thing. But I think he can explain it because there are, you know, there is overlap in various worldviews, like, um, you know, in a, in a philosophy like Stoicism or hedonism, yes, it's a pagan uh, pagan idea. It's a pagan philosophy, but that doesn't mean that some of the things that they say or argue or value aren't complementary or are also reflected in scripture. They sometimes are. And I think that's what Piper ultimately tries to do in desiring God. Um, so no, I wasn't making it. Uh, I listen, I don't make much. I, I, the, it, I, for me to say it's a race thing. I, I really do want evidence. I don't want to be a guy that, um, especially from, from my limited experience and perspective, I don't want to be a guy that throws that kind of stuff around because you know that um, I, I, I hate racism. Yeah. Uh, I've had yeah, you hate vis- ra- visceral. Yeah, you hate races. Yeah. <laughs> I, hate, I hate marathon. <laughs> I, hate, I hate the half marathon. 100 yard dash. <laughs> racism is a plague. Okay. Um, I, I really, really struggle with with people that demonstrate racism. Um, so in fact, one of the biggest blowups I ever had in my house uh, when I was young was when 
uh, my mother had said something uh, that was racist and I'd never seen it before because towards um, towards blacks, towards Hispanics, never, never a whisper, never mm. any awkward conversation. But when um, an Indian family bought a store near our house and the way that they interacted with my mom threw her off her game so much and the way everything was done, just culturally it was so different. Uh, she was saying things that you've never heard her say. And it, they came off very racist and boy, I lost my mind. As a teenager, I just, you know, I just couldn't like, wow, what are we getting off? So I, I, I hate racism, but I also, I don't, I, I don't want to accuse somebody of that unless they've actually demonstrated, you know, a, a, demonstrated that in, in some way that I could, I can verify. And I think that's me. good because the, here's the thing is, is, Oftentimes in our culture, though, even today, I read a tweet. Even today, I read a tweet. And I shared it with you, right? Yes. Uh, where <laughs> oh it's gosh. like you you ask a question. You ask a question mm -hmm. of a writer that's a that's of color, and all of a sudden you're a racist because of it. Yeah. I'm I'm getting tired of that. Yeah. I'm getting tired of like all of a sudden because I I question something or I disagree with something yeah. or I'm not on board with something. Now I'm a racist, and then I point out, well, hold on, I'm Hispanic. Well, it's like, yeah. well, you got money. Yeah. So and you're not the right kind of person of color that used to give you a pass it no longer does no it gives no, me a pass no because you can be african-american and if you don't think the right way then you don't count as black either yeah but biden's famous line if you don't vote for me you ain't black yeah right yeah. that's actually a real kind of perspective that's out there no and that, well and, and we know uh i don't want to say any uh any names um but like I, as far as the the individuals that said it right but I, I, someone said jokingly to a member of our congregation, right? Like you should be going you, to a predominantly African-American church. Okay. Okay. And the look on the individual's face was one of hurt. Mm. Uh, and I know the hurt, I understand their feeling on it. So for context, this person must be an African-American. Yes. Is. Okay. Yeah. So a, 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 a black person was told by someone. By, by a well-known African-American African figure. Yep. And, uh, uh, you know, we all joked around and played around, but as I reflected on it, mm -hmm. I actually went back to the individual and apologized because I understood the confusion, the pain of confusion that they were going through mm -hmm. because as a, as an individual that, uh, looks Hispanic, but thinks white and was raised white, I've never found like, I've, I've not felt settled in either category. Mm -hmm. And so for this individual, it was an unsettling moment yeah. of, Oh, so I'm not really welcomed here. Yeah, or yeah, or or pressure, pressure, you know, or, pressure or, from you know pressure. Say, oh, I shouldn't be here. Yeah, challenging his essentially challenging his blackness. Yeah. yeah. So, to me, that's a that's a pretty that, that's a, that's a damaging comment, yeah. Yeah. right? Uh, and that's why I had to go and apologize for for you know uh, uh, laughing and yeah. being a part of that because I I in my yeah, I, I just want to in, say in the moment, in the moment, you're right? laughing, moment, you're, you're laughing, nervous and everyone's everyone, you know, and I had to go repent. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I understood for that individual. It's like, you know what it takes to come in and still feel like you don't want to feel outside, but, you know, mm -hmm. to a degree. Right. Because there, there's there's a difference here. There's a difference here and there's different experiences. And now I'm being told I, I should, you know, you're not black enough by being here. Yeah. Yeah, it gets it, it gets messy. And what here's but the, what I what I am enjoying in the midst of all the things that do discourage me <laughs> online mm -hmm. on social media is like um, I do really benefit from hearing different perspectives from smart people, right? And so um, you know I, I actually benefit from reading the, uh, the sort of the series of tweets that come from you know, di different perspectives, whether that's um, you know anthony bradley or um or eric mason or um or uh or, or uh phillips uh well i was thinking like doug logan yeah doug logan uh -huh. uh, i'm talking about somebody else i can't think of somebody oh. else's name. okay but like uh anyways but i i enjoy i enjoy seeing them kind of work it all out among themselves right because like, you've got you know vody bacham on one side and then you've got eric mason on the other and I, I like for me, it's valuable to see them articulate and work through the, the things. Uh, what gets discouraging is when it's, you know, it, when it, things get super personal or when they yeah they get amped up too much and it's you're kind of talking past each other. Well, that's that's why I love like the calm voices of like a like a Phil Holmes, right? Philip yeah. Holmes, uh, because uh, that was the Phillip one guy. And, that's the guy I'm drawing, drawing a, oh, really? drawing okay. a blank. <laughs> like Phil and Jasmine. Yeah. I, like there's a calming. 
uh, there's just, there's it, it's a calming you know what i mean yeah. like it's it, it's 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 they're they're sincere yep they care they actually genuinely uh want to be gracious yep. right and understanding and at the same time like why can't we sort these things out better yep. right and it's like agree or disagree like like they're good people they love the lord mm. and uh i have no problem rolling with them or or like m- most people that love jesus I'm, like, I'm i'm pretty easy but when it's time to argue yeah man i'm down i'm down for arguing uh, yeah you like the argue no if we can if we can actually argue and not fight yeah yeah i don't, yeah. I don't mind that at all See, I, I miss the old like i don't know i guess the old debates if you want to say it that way like the old debates where it was cordial yeah there was an understanding of of you know this is still my my brother in christ and um or even beyond like so i remember james white um well, that's a, actually who i was thinking of right james white got a lot of flack because of how gracious and friendly he was towards some of his uh, Muslim debate opponents. Um, he treated them with kindness, mm. charity, love, they were friends, and then they would have these real debates. Yeah. And I, he got a lot of pushback for that because like, <laughs> you're, you're basically like you're some kind of a Muslim sympathizer. Or like some really- <laughs> Punch right, coddle left. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I, but then at the same time, I, you know, I see people, being less gracious with brothers and sisters in Christ who um, we ought to, we have so much more in common and we sh- I would hope that we're be able, we can work through these things because we at least have a, a, the same authority to appeal to. Mm. And, yeah, yeah. you know, we, oh, we have the word, we agree with the, with the word, you know, the inspired ESV version or whatever. <laughs> but all this, like this, um, the stuff that's kind of weighed on me um, and just kind of the, the funk that I've been in for the couple of weeks you know, it makes it, uh, it makes it harder to feel like, you know, praying mm. or studying, or it makes it harder to enjoy the means of grace in the same way that I have in the past. Mm. You ever, you ever experienced that? Oh yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and it's like, it's I, like, it's like, you're not feeling it. Yeah. It's just like, and I know like I know here we come feels feels. Okay. So, so emergent of yeah. you. Just go Nike. Just do it. Just, just yeah. Just, I, yeah. I, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But, it, you know, when you get when you get discouraged for whatever reason, like all kinds of reasons, like there you wind up in a season when, you know, maybe a particular means of grace, uh, whether it's going to church or singing or praying uh, or all of them, you're just like you're not experiencing uh, joy from it in a particular season. And I thought that would be something to talk about, too, which is like, you know, because I know a lot of people are going through that. Yeah. Um, when it when they. It, whether it's you know the the whole COVID thing, the politics stuff, um, the 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 infighting among Christians, a lot of people are are feeling weight, and yeah. so how do we process through that? How do we process through? I don't feel like doing it, and a lot of people then say, well, like, well, if I don't feel it, I'm not going to do it because if I just if I, I don't, don't want to go through the motions and I'll fake be, it, be a hypocrite if I yeah. if I pray to Jesus when I'm not feeling it and I don't you know I'm barely believing it, yeah. I mean, I find, and I know we joked about like the just do it, uh, but I, you know, I do find as, as we've talked about in the past, uh, pressing in is helpful. And I think yeah. being transparent and honest is, is like, like, I'm, I, okay. My personal devotions, I've been going through, I think I'm in Exodus. Or I am in Exodus right now. Um, you think, I think, I've been <laughs> I think I'm in Exodus, but, uh, was reading recently and, uh, it was, Moses and you know he would meet with God in the tent and and you know the cloud would descend and everyone would be worshiping outside he'd come out he'd be radiant mm. but it talked about like it it said something along the lines of uh he spoke to God as a friend mm. as, as someone would talk to a friend yeah and I mean obviously we know like there's you know, there's a difference there sure. between creator created but what I really kind of focused on was the honesty and transparency of that yeah the trust and the acknowledgement and, and, and the comfort, it, it almost like it was, it felt to me different than like when Adam uh, was walking in the garden, when the, he fell and he needed fig leaves to cover himself. Yeah. He was afraid of showing who he really is. And for Moses, and I think for us, even as we pray when we don't want to, it's being open about and honest and transparent about here, here I am, Lord, mm-hmm. like this is, this is me. This is where I'm at. I'm struggling right now. And that's what the psalmists do. Like the psalmists are very open. You've abandoned me. You know, they're not feeling it. 
uh, mm-hmm. at the beginning of a lot of those psalms, psalms of lament, whatever. And uh, but they work work it out, and, yeah. and that and that's that's what I I, I have found. Um, though you know, one season in particular years ago lasted quite a long time mm. before I I felt any different about it, but I wouldn't stop going to the Lord in prayer because no. I I knew that's one of the things that he uses to actually change the heart. He, yeah. you know, as we're praying and, and pouring our heart out to God, he, he, he does act and he, he does bring scripture to mind and he does guard our hearts and our minds. And, and along that line, right. If you don't mind me using yeah. this example, uh, like you were trained, like you were honest with me about that mm-hmm. and you were honest with, well, obviously with, uh, your, uh, with Jen. Um, but Joe was honest. And I think that's where community comes into play here Yeah, yeah. is like, being honest with those around you saying, I am struggling here. I yeah. am struggling. Please pray for me. Because, you know, I know, you know, Michelle and I uh, prayed regularly for you. Right. Mm. Uh, and prayed regularly for uh, uh, just the season you're going through that, that the Lord would comfort you and give you peace and to strengthen you and to bring you out of that. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think when we're talking about these things, we want to be transparent with each other uh, because I, there is no super Christian. This, this yeah. mentality of a super Christian like, I don't know, There's, growing up in youth, it's like in youth group, you think I want to be like Paul, the super Christian, yeah. right? That, that That's what I aspire to. And I think we've given ourselves, or at least I did, give us this mentality of I can't show weakness mm. of faith. I can't show that I'm struggling. I can't show that I'm I'm doubting right now because I don't want others to, to think less of me that maybe he's not as strong as believer as, as we thought he was. But you know what? I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. And I need you to know and I need you to come alongside me and to to love me, care for me, pray for me, encourage me. Um, and when I start doubting and telling myself these lies, rebuke that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, you know, there, there is no super Christian. I would say there are no super Christians. There's just liars or, mm. or pretenders. Right. You know, they're either lying or they're pretending. Man, and- is that just cynical? Are we just cynical people? Uh, no, because like when you like all of the people that like not all many of the people that we look to and go, wow, that person was so used by the Lord. But you look at John Calvin, you look at John Knox, you look at Charles Spurgeon. These are guys that struggled with depression and anxiety, uh, and fear. They, were, they went through seasons of doubt. Uh, they were real people. And it's reflected in their writings, yeah. it's in the sermons, right? Uh, Richard Baxter, all these guys that did that. And what I, I think we oftentimes experience is, you know, we have a, we have a superficial read of a, a historical figure, uh, even a historical biblical figure, or we have examples of leaders who, who put up a front and don't let people in to see what they're really going mm. through. I know for years, and we've talked about this, but for years, I used to look at pastors and go, I can't be one of those. Because I, because they're super, like they're, they're, they're on they another got it all level. together. Yeah. They're on a totally another level. And I, their kids are so well behaved. No, that, that I, I could usually tell that wasn't. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was always like, yeah, you know, I, it, it, and I, and I honestly, I didn't, I wasn't cynical. I didn't doubt them. I, I genuinely thought like, okay, so <laughs> to be a pastor, you can't have doubts, struggles, you know, um, times of, of weariness, fatigue, doubt. Um, and it wasn't until I, you know, was a Christian longer and began to meet other leaders who were transparent and honest that I saw, okay, yeah, everybody's, everybody's a sinner and a saint in the church mm. and they all have those struggles. And so, yeah, I think knowing, I think one of the keys for me has been, I think for everybody is knowing, even if you're not feeling it, that this is what God uses to change my heart. So, uh, sometimes you got to be on a medication for a long period of time mm-hmm. before you see the benefits. Uh, I think some, but I was also going to, so I, I would say like, sometimes you got to, you got to press in, but, um, and, and, and persevere. But I wanted, I wanted to ask you, um, because I, one of the common things, uh, aside from prayer that I hear is that people, um, will say like, oh, I don't want to go to church today. Mm. Uh, and they'll have a variety of reasons. Um, I don't like the songs that we sing or I'm in a bad mood or, or uh, the weather's nice yeah, <laughs> or the weather's bad or <laughs> yeah, weather's nice. It's, it's either too, too nice, nice or too bad. <laughs> oh, can't do it. <laughs> Gotta stay at home or for, you know, uh, the I game mean, is on. The game's on. Yeah. I was about to say, but we have the bears. So it's yeah, kinda, nobody really cares. Um, I know we got Andy Dalton. Hooray. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who that is. Um, so, okay. So pastoral advice, mm-hmm. Christian advice, friend advice, somebody doesn't I don't I would say don't worry about the reason 
They're like, you know what? I'm not going to go to church. And they're not going to go to hell because they didn't go to church. They're not going to mm-hmm. come under discipline. But they don't want to go to church or they don't want to go to their small group because they're they're not feeling it in one of a thousand ways. How how would you encourage them to actually go? What what hope would you offer them so that they actually do, you know, put on their shoes, even mm-hmm. if they go in their pajamas, even mm-hmm. if they forget their shoes, but just get to church? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think we have this hope that as we as we come together as the people of God, God is going to meet us. Right? Mm. Um, and I believe that as you as you're there and as you're worshiping, uh, I do believe there's going to be something. Yeah. I do believe that the Spirit's going to use something, whether it is a song, whether it's a uh, a conversation, whether it's communion, whether it is the sermon or one part of the sermon mm. or just one word from the sermon. Yeah, um, I, I do believe the Lord is going to encourage you that morning. Especially because, especially as a church, and I, I believe that for Redeemer, mm. uh, because I know the word is so central. Yeah. That the word is part of our prayers. It's part of our songs. That the word is being proclaimed. Uh, and the word is so saturated that I'm like, I, I truly believe that you're going to be there. And, mm. and the spirit's going to use the word um, to encourage you. Yeah, that's a good word, man. That's a good word. Yeah. I, I think that... Um, the, the reality is, is whether you feel it or not, when, you, when you're with the, the people of God, when you're in the assembly, when you're taking communion, God is at work in you. Mm. You may not know it. You may not see, but he is doing something. He's building. You know, you are becoming. And sometimes it takes a little while before you can actually see it. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DrDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast. You can go to the store, Joe store, and grab some gear. Fresh pod every Monday and yes, Thursday. Yes, it's every Monday and Thursday. Uh, we do have some blog posts and video content. But we also have uh, uh, all, access. all access. We got Banter Truth on Tuesdays and Weekday Wisdom. So head on over to DrDevotion.com slash all access. Later. Thank you.